Hey everybody, welcome to Thingamajigger Thursday. In today's episode, I'm going to show you what this medieval looking contraption is used for. And then for next week's mystery tool, we'll have a double feature with these two goofy looking things right here. And then we'll wrap it up with one of my favorite and probably most used tools of all time. Let's go. All right, so here's last week's mystery tool. Uh, we didn't get any correct answers and I honestly had no clue what it was for. And it looks really medieval. And uh, I actually jumped on different forums. I have sifted through thousands of pages of old catalogs in archive.org, old tool catalogs and such, uh, probably eight to 10 hours worth of sifting. And this morning, sitting having coffee, I was looking uh, or thinking about tonight or doing the video today. And uh, I just, I, I couldn't come out here and not know what it is. So I got back on the computer this morning and I did, got back to searching. And uh, what's really crazy is last Sunday, I was uh, thinking about it all day and I came up with an idea of what I thought it was. And I went to searching for that tool and I couldn't find it. So I, I kind of gave up on it. But like I said, this morning I got back into it and uh, lo and behold, I was right. This is actually a piston ring groove cleaner. All right, so it was definitely, I, I knew right off the bat it was not custom made. And uh, I'll show you a couple reasons why. I took it apart to clean it up and look for stamps or numbers. And you can see in here, it's actually inset. It's um, drilled out just for the spring. And these, the, the, the cutters are actually on spring mounted bolts. And uh, so I, I was pretty certain this was not custom made. Now I'm sure a, a machine shop could come up with something like this. It just didn't have the look. And to have the knurling on both handles and the gears. It, so anyway, yeah, it's a Hastings piston ring groove cleaner. And I'll throw a photo up here of the catalog um, page, you know, the, the sale uh, explanation in the catalog. Um, I'm going to have to double check. I don't remember what year it said. I was so excited about finding it. But uh, I'm really kind of uh, glad I figured it out. I don't have to add this to the stumper pile. So there we go. That's this week. And I'll tell you what, there is nothing on the internet for this. this I, I'm not joking when I say I sifted through thousands and thousands and thousands of pages of books. Uh, so anyway, all right. If you got any questions on that, thoughts, comments, whatever, you know the drill for that. Here's uh, next week's two tools. This one shouldn't be all that tough and I'm not gonna bother covering up the numbers. It does say made in, actually I can't read that. So anyway, you guys can figure that out. Chicago, okay, it says Chicago. It doesn't actually say made in USA. M-A-L-L, -L, no, yeah, M-A-L-L-E-A-E-D, iron, I think. I don't know if the camera will be able to get that, but. There you go, so that'll be one of them. And then this <laughs> contraption here, got a little clamp here, probably for clamping it on a, a bench or a countertop or a table. And here is how it works. It's got this goofy looking thing. It's obviously old. I don't know the, the age of it. I do know what this one is. So that'll be, these two right here will be next week's mystery tools. You know the drill on that. If you got any thoughts or ideas on what those are used for, go ahead and throw something in the comments and uh, we'll cover those next week. All right, moving on to my probably most used tool of all time, that. Now I've actually done a video for EDC uh, and maybe I'll do another one because I've gotten a few more EDC things. This is a, uh, an Olite Baton 3 Pro. Max and uh, I really like this. I love that it doesn't fall off my belt because the, the clip actually holds it to the knurling on the handle. Anyway, that's not today's tool. This is today's tool. This is the Victoria Knox uh, Swiss tool and it, it has been my on my hip for at least 10 years. This was, I'm sorry, this was one of my first uh, multi-tools. This is a Leatherman Wave. I got this back in the early 2000s. I actually think I bought this one in Singapore when I was uh, traveling through. And I carried this with me while I was in the military for probably 15 years. Uh, I broke one of the uh, screwdrivers. Let's see, it's the medium size. Yeah, right there. That, that guy's been busted off for a long, long time. And uh, this is the original Leatherman Wave. 
Then I picked up this guy. This is the newer one after I got this one. So I figured I, I might want to try this. The Plus or whatever whatever it is, the Leatherman Wave Plus, it's got uh, the, the locking feature where this one doesn't. I can't tell you how many times I was trying to get a screw out with this one here and push and push and push and, and it just buckles and you smash your knuckles in there. So I, I still like the Leatherman Waves, but this one, it is a bigger tool overall. You can see the size difference. The edges, I think, are much more comfortable to hold on to. All the tools are accessible from the outside when it's folded, whereas the wave is not. You gotta open it up to get the inside tools. Now, the, uh, the wave, yes, it's one hand open for the knives. I don't really care about that, though. I've, I'm not one-handed. One and uh, it's never really been an issue to just go ahead and get the blade out. And like I said, everything locks. Now, unfortunately I did, I was trying to pry a, a roofing nail out of in between deck boards, uh, I don't know, last summer. And the screwdriver I was using, uh, this one here, the main screwdriver, I friggin' broke the return or the spring in there. And uh, it's really bugging me, but it's been like this for probably eight months now. And I can still, get it open eventually. I just don't bother with it anymore. So I'm sure Victoria Knox um, would warranty this and either replace or fix it, uh, but I'm not worried about it right now. I'll take care of that when I get a chance. If anybody knows for sure whether or not Victoria Knox would do that, uh, I'd, I'd appreciate a heads up, but it wouldn't be that hard to find out, I'm sure. And I'm not lying. I, I use this many times a day, many, many times. I used it today, I used it yesterday, the day before, the day before. Uh, if I had to say there's one tool I use the most, other than maybe car keys, if you would consider that a tool, this would be it. I mean, you can see how worn in it is. The, the black is basically gone in a lot of it. Um, it does snap together in the um, ruler side right there. That was one thing I was looking at that new, that was uh, the Wave Arc, and the Arc doesn't even have a ruler on it. I was really shocked. $234, and you, they couldn't even be bothered to print some sort of ruler on there. Now, I don't use that very often, and honestly, with that, the Arc, you're mostly play, uh, paying for the, with the Ma Magna cut blade, and uh, not so much the multi-tool part of it. But, I mean, for $234, bucks, you get a nice multi-tool with a Magna cut blade. But I've never needed a Magna Cut blade. Yes, it holds an edge longer, and, I, and I'm no I'm no pro, so you know take that for what it's worth. But Victoria Knox Swiss Tool has been my favorite and probably most used tool of all time. And for my regular viewers, I've been working on this for the last couple of days, and it now actually works. Still got a couple little things to take care of here. <laughs> yeah, a little AVE sticker. Go, go to his uh, page to find him. He's got an Etsy store as well. Go to his YouTube channel and then you can go to his Etsy page from there. Get your cool stickers. Oh yeah, don't forget about doing that for me, please. Uh, but yeah, it, I'm super, super, super excited about this. Um, I need to get a release handle. It's just, actually I got a bolt sitting here somewhere. Oh yeah, it's just a M10 bolt. And, but it's gotta be shaped. The last thing I need is for the, I mean, this is, you know, eye height and walk through here and snag your face on that. That would not be cool. But uh, I'll get that taken care of when I get a chance. And even, uh, I didn't even, it didn't even come with the, uh, the limit switch up there, but I think I might have something laying around. And I'd like to get my wiring all sheathed up. But other than that, I mean, 10K lift and I managed, at least as far as I know, not to hit any of my plumbing in the floor, my radiant heat pecs. This one's close. It was really close, but I put the mark, uh, the marker right here, the Sharpie is where it actually is. And I didn't drill that one all the way through and the, um, the pecs is actually under the concrete. So that one should be fine. And I, I did both wedge bolts and epoxy. So hopefully that's not an issue. 
All right, well, that'll be a wrap for this episode. If you got any comments, suggestions, thoughts, or future video ideas, please throw something down in the comments. Other than that, have a great weekend, and we will see you next Thursday.